Hey everyone, this is Coach Lori here. Um, and I wanna welcome you to Conversations with Courageous Cancer Warriors, where we share stories from cancer warriors, caregivers, and other professionals on how you could get beyond your fear of reoccurrence and living a life you love with a positive mindset. I am very excited for today's guest. Um, we, are, we have the honor of having Kathy, Kathy Biaze, who is a registered holistic nutritionist and a cancer coach who helps people understand the power that lies in their fork. Um, she is a breast cancer survivor herself, and she specializes in the functional application of nutrition for health improvement for chronic diseases, particularly cancer, and she empowers her, pay, her clients to take control of their healing and support them throughout their journey. Kathy, thank you so very much for being here with us today. It's my absolute pleasure, Lori. Thanks for having me. I'm hoping you can see me. Okay, I'm on two pillows here and my computer's like moving. I'm doing my best. <laughs> no, you look great um, and it, it'll be perfect. Now, I just wanted to... Um, Let's talk about you. Let's talk about your cancer journey for a second. How, how, was, how, was, how did this all begin for you? Um, well, I was, thought it was relatively healthy. I was working with my dad and he, I'll do the quick story. He got, he fell ill. And so we ended up closing up the business. And about a month after that, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I found a small lump. Uh, very tiny, it would come and go. And it just literally coincided with my very first mammogram. So it was, you know, a lot of things that may sound odd, lined up for me perfectly. Um, so I went and, you know, long and the short, I was diagnosed. Actually, I went for the mammogram, I went away on holiday, that was sort of the process that uh, at the timing. And when I got back, I had 14 messages, the very last one was we need to see you again. And I kind of wasn't surprised. But uh, you know, that pit in the stomach feeling. So I went back in. And the technologist said, you're good. It was, you know, sometimes this happens, it looks like a fold in the skin. So we don't need to, you're, you're fine. And I was like, I'm out of here. I'm done. Great. In the back of my mind, I thought, I don't know, but, and so I'm w literally walking out the door and the radiologist says, listen, you know what we have, you booked up, not the radiologist, the lady doing the, the doctor doing the ultrasound. She goes, we have you booked. Let's just do it. You know, we'll just do it. Make sure everything is cool because, you know, you did say you felt a lot. And I thought, oh, fine then. So we went in and she's, she says, you know what? There's something, I see something there. And she goes, and I just wouldn't feel right if I let you go. And so then the process, and then I was diagnosed and went through my year of treatment. And she probably saved my life or at least a much different journey through breast cancer. So as odd as it sounds, I'm grateful for the process. And at that time, almost, well, it's nine years ago, I don't know how it is where you are, but it's a test and then maybe wait a week or two and then another test and wait. And if, you know, I had gone through that process, it would have pushed everything back so much. Could have been another year maybe before it was found. So I was grateful that, um, that it was found early enough. And then what had happened too is after surgery, you know, they said it was very tiny, but I had had one test where I bled quite a bit in the breast. and after surgery when I woke up, I, you know, I had the drain in my breast and then I also had it in my, under my armpit. And I thought, you know, what's happened. And uh, so she came, the surgeon came and she told me that they had found it in the first four lymph nodes. And of course I started to, to cry because that seems like, you know, that's, that seals the worst, right? And she said, why are you crying? And I said, because that means, and she goes, what it means for you is you've got to go through more treatment. She goes, we've caught this and you want us to catch this early. So I was so grateful for the care that I had and then the integrative care that was going on as well. So that, that in a nutshell is my process through, you know, fast forward through all the treatments. So surgery, then I had reconstruction surgery, um, chemotherapy, radiation, the whole, the whole nine yards, and then my hormone therapy. So I'm still, I have one more year of hormone therapy and then we'll see what happens. Yeah, I had a very similar experience where my cancer was also found on my baseline mammogram. 
And it was the last thing that I expected. Mm. You know, it's like you kind of, I don't know. Did you have a family history or anything like that of breast cancer? My mom had breast cancer when she was in her late sixties. I was in my forties. Um, and I just found this tiny little lump and it went and it came and it went, but I, I knew enough about my body that I knew that it was not supposed to be there. It wasn't like I had, um, when I had my periods, I'd have, you know, sort of lumpy breasts. I'd have cysts, the ducts, and they'd go away after each period. So I knew what the difference was. And this was like a tiny little pea. And, um, when I found it, I, I had this feeling, I don't know why I just had this feeling that that's what it was. Yeah. And it's so, you bring up a very important point of like, you need to know your body and you need to listen to your intuition. So many people, um, that we talk to is like, I knew, but I just didn't want to deal with it. So, um, early detection is definitely key. I think you and I are both examples of that. Um, and so- knowledge, knowledge can be a scary thing. And I, and I fully, um, I fully acknowledge that for a lot of people. I'm that way myself in a lot of ways. I'd rather not know. I, I don't have a lot of testing done. Um, and knowledge can be, it's, it's definitely empowering and you need to know these things, but it can be a scary, a scary avenue. Whereas for me, because of my background in oncology, <clears throat> excuse me, I had the opposite. I knew too much. I saw too much. Um, and I, it, it petrified me. It, mm-hmm. it, I, it almost, it got me to a point that it's taken me three years now to be like, okay, I need to deal with this. I know this sounds yeah. crazy, but like I went through the motions and it took me a really long time to get to a point where I'm like, okay, I'm in control of this now. I don't know if that makes sense, but like now I'm starting to finally look at, I've always been a healthy eater. I've always exercised, but now, now I'm emotionally ready to take it up another notch, right? Well, I think when you're in that environment where you're always seeing, you know, pathology, you're only seeing the negative pieces, right? And that's the Mm -hmm. only story that's being read to you. And this is, this is wrong. There are so many survivors. There are so many people who have gone through this and are living a life beyond cancer. And this has been a disease and it's been a chapter and you move on with any disease. You're always going to have memories and cancer, um, you know, because we still associate cancer with the bald lady that has the intravenous and, and it's not that way all the time. And if it is, even if you lose your hair or, you know, whatever, you can live a life through treatment. You can live a life that's, that's, you know, it's a, it's more than a hiccup. I, a hundred percent, it's more than a hiccup, but it's doable and it's doable for most people. There are stories you've seen it in my line of business. I've seen some sad stories, but it's not, unique to cancer. Life is full of sad stories, but when you're surrounded by them all the time, I don't think, you know, you give yourself the space to see the beautiful stories that are out there. And there are many. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And so for the folks listening um, along that lines, like how do you keep hope? How do you keep a positive mindset? Well, I went down, it took me two weeks. It took me a good solid two weeks. Um, when I first heard the news, I think it took me 10 seconds to figure out a life where I wasn't a part of it for my family. You know, it was what's going to happen when I'm not here. And I think that's, that's the knee jerk reaction because again, of this, of this whole idea that when you have cancer, your first reaction is, is negative. It's, it's not going to be a good outcome. I think that's what's been put into our head. Um, And it, like I said, it took me two weeks and then it was my husband actually. And I quote him all the time. And he said to me, you know, why I don't understand why you're in this space. He said, you're healthy. You know what the, the, um, your treatment plan is going to be. And no one has given you any sort of a negative implication that things are going to be anything but good. And he said, you know, you have cancer and the rest of us are afraid of getting it. He said, so put your head down and let's do this. And I was like, you're so right. Like you're so right. And the other part of the piece was, is that I, I'm a spiritual person. And I thought, you know what, I'm not doing this alone. 
there's something out there and there's something bigger than me. And this is, this is what I've been given and I will put my head down and I will, I'll bow through it. And, and that's what changed me that it took two weeks. And then I realized there's a bigger piece of out there for me to, this is just a part of it. And, and I will get through this and I'm strong and I can do it. And I did. And I had lots of support. And I think the biggest piece though, for me was that I felt that there was a bigger thing out there leading me and there was a purpose yeah. and that's how I got through it. Yeah. And, and you mentioned support, like support is mm -hmm. so um, important throughout this process. What would you tell the caregivers that might be listening? Um, you know, the, the relationship between the cancer patient and the support person is, is unique. And you can't do everything. You can't step into the shoes of the person you're supporting. You have to be there and be a reflection of maybe what they're giving to you. Um, as a patient, you know, I was lucky to have the support I had. There are a lot of people that don't have the support. Um, you need to talk things out. I felt sometimes like I was a burden. Um, I felt sometimes that I would ask the same question over and over and over again. And I think the big piece is the fear that the supporters have to understand. You know, you are there maybe to, to help with maybe some side effects, help them get through it, to bring food. Yeah. But I think the big piece is to understand the fear that their loved one is going through. And that may manifest in different ways. And it can drive people away because it's a very strong emotion. But if you can be there and just walk through the fear and you don't always have to talk, you don't always have to be words of encouragement. You need to be, just be there and be in that space. Um, sometimes the most powerful communication is just sitting together in silence and that's that's a comfortable place if you can get to that space that's a comfort beyond uh, what most of us are are accustomed to yeah that that's so true um and i think it's hard for some people um whether you have been through it and you've had your own experience or you haven't been through it at all and you have no idea what it's like it's hard for them to wrap their brains around it and know what to do. Um, one, of the, hard. one of the things that I um, heard that I was like, you know, this is really true is that people should, you know, as a, as a person undergoing treatment and, and going through this process, there's sometimes we have no idea what we need, right? Like, because we're right. so in the weeds that the best thing advice I ever heard is someone saying, you know, go buy their groceries, go clean their house, like mm -hmm. do something instead of asking, what do you need? Um, Cause sometimes we don't know what that is. No. Um, and you know what, and not everyone's gonna show up to the party. And I found that quite um, enlightening. So people that were there for me, there were a few and I was very grateful and surprised. And people who just went away and didn't, weren't around for it all, that surprised me too. And I, you know, don't take offense to that. Yeah. Some people can't take that on. Or for some people, it's like too close to the, to the grain, you know, well, if, if she can get it, then I can get it. Like she wasn't, you know, and some people can't be there and you can't as a patient or as someone going through cancer, you can't begrudge somebody that better that they're not there during that time than to be there and not of benefit to you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have to second that a lot of people that I expected to be there weren't and the people that I never would have thought Mm -hmm. um, would put forth so much effort were the ones that truly were there. Um, mm -hmm. and again, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. Don't make it mean that they're less of a person or less of a friend. No, it's just, they can't and they know they can't and give them the space too. Absolutely. Now, um, 
you said that you also have your own podcast, correct? Do you want to talk do. a little bit about that? Well, my podcast is uh, called The Health Hub, and that it's 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 not about cancer. It's about I do integrative interviews. I've had doctors on. I've had researchers on. So it's about the experience of understanding integrative care within the health space. So it's not specific to cancer. I needed a break from being in, under that dome. So this brings on researchers, doctors, scientists. I've had chefs on. Um, I had PCOS doctor on. Um, so a diff different spaces. But the thrust of it is to to get people to start asking questions about their health, to give them tools to ask, you know, whatever their team is, questions. Um, I, I think we're getting to this space now in, especially with the, the thrust that we've had here with the COVID and people working at home. I think we're getting into this space now where technology and the biometrics of things are giving us the ability to ask questions more as opposed to just be receiving um, information and um, symptom checks and so forth. So I, I'm trying to give people an education on understanding their own health and the ways that they can speak to their doctor about certain things. So it's, it's an important piece and I think it's becoming more and more a part of medicine now with functional medicine coming out uh, into the forum and, and going past symptoms and trying to get to root cause. So it's a big thing now and a lot of people still aren't up to speed with a lot of it. So that's the thrust of the show. That's fantastic. It's definitely needed. Um, it can be overwhelming, especially if you don't have any experience with it. So what yes. would you tell someone who might be looking into um, integrative therapies for the first time? Well, you've got to, it's like a good hairdresser. You have to find the person that you can work with, that you're comfortable with. As within any profession, you're going to have people people who can be very right, people who can be very left, and they have to go with who you gravitate toward. But when it comes to um, working with somebody in, in the functional medicine space, you want to make sure that they've got a good background in medicine. I mean, that, that's, that's the key, right? They need to know anatomy, physiology, but you also want to be working with somebody who is looking to figure out what the underlying cause of things are for you. You know, Symptoms are just a way of your body expressing that something's gone awry. So you need to be able to talk to somebody if you are well-versed in, in medicine or well-versed in integrative care, then you can maybe take on more of a role. But if you're not, then you need to find a doctor that is willing to accept the questions and answer the questions that you're asking. And we're still in that, that time where doctors don't have a lot of time. You know, they're very busy. So you need to find someone who will sit with you and answer questions. So to me, that's very, very important. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, a lot of what happens is patients will either think they understand or they might forget what is being told to them. So it's very, very important for them to be able to feel comfortable and have those open conversations. Um, it is, when you're, when you're with the, the cancer area though, they're so busy. So that's why having an integrative person, someone maybe in the naturopathic world or um, like a coach, having them to be able to say, you know, the doctor said this, what does that mean? And then they can walk you through it. So, it, Sometimes we can't ask too much of the doctors. So you need to have someone who will sit down. It might be a second person and give you the time to ask questions and maybe clarify things. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Um, so how can people find you? Probably the best place is my website, which is kathybiaste.com. And then all my social sites are there. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And yeah, so you can contact me through my website as well. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. I'm definitely going to be looking forward to listening to your podcast some more. Um, and is there anything else that you would like for our listeners to know? Um, I am developing a program, so it's going into the beta testing right now, and it's for active cancer care and prevention. So because of all of the exposure I've had on my podcast with different doctors, I've really sort of broadened my understanding of nutrition. So it's not just what you eat. Um, so 
The program is four weeks, over four hours of um, recording and just a ton of information and handouts. And it's dealing with systems, dealing with uh, things like circadian rhythm, timing of eating, natural support for detoxification. So really supporting what's needed to get the most out of your food. And it, it's for prevention and it's for people that are in active care as well. So it's something that I do now in clinic and have had real success with it. So I, I'm taking it online. Oh, I, I love that. And is that um, available on your website as well, that information? It will be. We are still um, still getting the back end done. So all the recordings are done and we're just starting the marketing phase now. So I'm hoping it's out in a month. Oh, that's fantastic. That's definitely, yeah. definitely needed. Um, that's information that everybody can benefit from regardless of whether or not they're dealing with a chronic illness. Um, so exactly. I, I thank you so much for being here with us today. This was absolutely amazing, very informative. And thank you for who you are in the world and the work that you're doing for, for everyone. You're truly- Thank amazing. you and thank you for having me. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah.